we're gonna talk about exfoliants. Hey guys, welcome back. It's Sarah or Sachu or Sarah Chung. It's that time of the year again to round up all the best skincare products of 2020. I feel like it's been a really good year for skincare. There's so many new brands and there's so many new skincare influencers. And I feel like everybody's in lockdown and trying to take care of themselves that skincare became a much bigger priority than before. I feel like it's really putting the pressure on brands because everybody's so much more educated now. Even for me, I have very strong opinions about skincare. Y'all know this. I also learned so much about so many people in the skincare community. So I'm actually gonna list a bunch of my favorite skincare influencers that I follow in 2020 and I discovered. Just off the top of my head, y'all know Hiram, James Welsh, Tierra Willis. And this community consists of like estheticians and dermatologists and just average skincare consumers like myself. And I love that everybody kind of has different opinions and different approaches to skincare. One thing we can all agree on is we have to wear sunscreen, which is where I'm gonna start today because there have been a lot of really good sunscreens this year. One thing before I start, I do not have all the products that I'm talking about here with me. I did take notes of everything that I loved in 2020. I was not thinking ahead to do like an empties video by the end of the year, so I just recycled all the packaging that I was done with. That will be something I'll remember to do in 2020. I also recently just moved, so I threw away a bunch of stuff that was expired or old. Whether I have them in hand or not, I just want to let y'all know the best of the best products of 2020 for me. Again, let's start with sunscreen. So at this point of your life, if you're not wearing sunscreen every day, what are you doing? Sunscreen is basically the start of your skincare routine. It's the basis of everything. If you're not protecting your skin, there's no reason to add all these layers of serum. So that's why it's so important to me. One sunscreen that I love, I was so sure was going to make it into this video, unfortunately flopped by the end of the year is the Perito Unscented Centella Sunscreen. This is my third bottle of it. And I was so in love with it because it blends so well. Well, it looks invisible on your skin. It looks beautiful underneath makeup. And I was just so in love because you, you don't find a lot of SPF 50 sunscreens that are really just cosmetically, aesthetically pretty when you apply it. And that's kind of like, if it doesn't look good on your skin, when you apply it, it's really hard to convince people to wear it. So I really love this and I recommended it to everybody. They did an in vivo test and the SPF was actually measured to be around 19, which is way less than what is labeled and less than SPF 30, which is what is generally recommended for everyday use. This is a really big deal because there are people who might be prone to skin cancer who might think that they are protected this whole time when they really weren't. For me personally, of course, there are medical reasons, but mostly it's cosmetic because my I don't have a history of skin cancer in my family. Incorrect labeling could increase the risk of someone developing melanoma. So this is serious. I posted about this on Instagram, but I want to let everybody on YouTube know as well because I raved about this so many times and there's an update and I don't want anybody else who has a sunscreen to be misled. There is a post uh, by InsideCoder.com. I'll link it here. And there's also a very informative post by Lab Muffin, who is also one of my favorite skincare influencers. So I'll link both of these posts if you wanna read more in detail about this entire issue. But basically, this sunscreen is no longer my top favorites. SPF 19 is not nearly enough for daily sun protection. So unfortunately, canceled. Perito has also since issued a statement. They are issuing refunds to a lot of customers who bought the sunscreen screen this year. Does this mean that you can't trust this brand or even Korean brands in general? No. These sunscreen controversies have happened in the US as well with US brands. This is not an issue that's specific to Korean brands. The American FDA can fuck up as well, and they have in the past. Sometimes brands rely on manufacturers to do the testing, but I really hope that brands are a little bit more careful in the future, whether they're Korean or American, with sunscreen labeling. Anyway, that was a very long tangent. I just wanna let everybody know my thoughts on the issue. And also, if you already purchased this because of me, I'm very sorry, and I hope you get your money back. On to some sunscreen that I actually am in love with this year. So first off, I have here the Black Girl Sunscreen Kids Version Moisturizing Sunscreen Lotion for face and body. I actually have two bottles of these and I'm probably gonna have a third. And the reason why I love it so much is because it's fragrance-free, water resistant, it has shea butter, it has jojoba seed oil, it's fragrance-free, it's also oxybenzone-free. So if you're allergic to that ingredient or you just wanna avoid it, the active sunscreen ingredient is avabenzone homocellate and 
octacillate. I love this because this is relatively affordable. This is $9.99 on blackgirlsunscreen.com and it looks pretty invisible on your skin as well. It's a black owned company and it's developed for that purpose that even when you apply sunscreen on darker skin tones, it's not gonna look gray or blue and it's broad spectrum and it's SPF 50. So this deserves a huge shout out. They have two sunscreens on their website. I always bought this one because I like to have SPF 50 as my base sunscreen. The other one is SPF 30, but I've also heard really good things about that one as well. This is the kids version, but you can use it. 24 year olds can use this too. The only thing if I have to be nitpicky is in the back, it says bye bye umbrella. Do you see this? It says bye bye umbrella and that is false. Just because you have sunscreen on, that doesn't mean you don't need sun protective clothing. It's always good to layer up and have an umbrella, have a visor, have a, have sunscreen around. You can never be too protected from the sun. Another sunscreen I really love this year, which is a little bit pricier and I actually don't have it with me right now because I finished it, but it's a Dr. Sturm SPF 50 sun drops. I apply it with the two finger rule. This is a tip that was popularized by my friend Tiara. Basically you need two fingers of sunscreen to cover your face, neck, and ears because a lot of people don't apply enough sunscreen and the challenge with sunscreens is that it looks ghostly it looks gray it has like a weird tint so people don't want to apply that much but the dr sturm sun drops looks invisible i applied two fingers of it all over my face and you just cannot see it. It's a very light texture, so I think this would be good for people even with oily skin. The Black Girl Sunscreen Kids version is a little bit more moisturizing, which to me is a plus because I have dry skin. This has avocado oil, jojoba oil, aloe, shea butter, so this is very moisturizing. I do not need to apply moisturizer before I apply sunscreen, so it's just a two-in-one. Whereas the sun drops, I feel like it's more for normal to oily skin, but I still love it. Like I don't find it drying, but it definitely doesn't make me more oily if that makes sense. The Dr. Sturm sunscreen has vitamin E, beta glucan. It's fragrance free. It also has hyaluronic acid. It's There's not much else added to it. It just does a really good job at what it is being a sunscreen. It does have a higher price tag. I found it online on Cult Beauty for 40 pounds, but if you want to splurge on nicer sunscreen, I think it's a very good option. The last sunscreen that made it to the list is the Versed Guards Up Daily Mineral Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 35. I remember receiving the PR package and there's a note in there that says good sunscreen takes a long time to develop and I really felt it with the sunscreen because it feels very different. It's designed to protect you both from UVA and UVB and blue light damage even though blue light really isn't that big of a deal. Uh, there's a really informative video that Michelle did, Lab Muffin, that I'll link, but basically it's not that big of an issue. You really have to stare at the laptop for a long, long time for it to have like a minor effects, whereas UVA and UVB rays is way more damaging to the skin. The active sunscreen ingredient is zinc oxide and it has a really natural finish. When you squeeze it out, it's kind of like a skin color and it, it feels very creamy on your hands, but once you apply it, it's a very skin-like finish. Like it's not too matte, it's not too dewy, which I've never really seen with mineral sunscreens before. I would want something that's like a little higher in SPF. I think I just got so used to SPF 50 that I'm spoiled. It also has a lot of antioxidants in the formula, which actively fights sun damage. It's just a really nice sunscreen all around. Highly recommend. It's also fragrance free, but I feel like, do I really have to say this for every pick? If I'm gonna include it in my best of 2020 skincare video, of course it's gonna be fragrance free. I mean, it's me. Next up, we have cleansers. So one cleanser I've been really loving that I really didn't start using until end of 2020, is the Naturium Niacinamide Cleansing Jelly. It has 3% niacinamide plus hyaluronic acid and vitamin C. This is $18 and this packs a lot for a cleanser. It has niacinamide, hyaluronic acid, vitamin C, all really good ingredients for brightening and cleansing your skin. And Susan Yara said that it's specifically formulated so it doesn't strip your skin barrier, which I totally agree with because I have very sensitive and dry skin and I wear makeup a lot. I always remove my makeup with micellar water first and then go in with the cleanser, but even then some cleansers either strip my skin too much or it it doesn't remove everything. And this is the perfect balance of leaving your skin clean, but not strip. Another really good ingredient in here is glycerin. Glycerin doesn't get the hype it deserves because it's in so many things and it's a really cheap ingredient. It's not a sensationalized, but it's a really good ingredient to have in a cleanser. Glycerin is a humectant that's present in natural fatty lipids. I think that's one of the ingredients that made the cleansing experience so good. It does leave my skin feeling really bouncy. If you can tell, I'm already halfway done with this. And I think Naturium in general, even though it had a rough start when the brand first started, the products themselves are so 
iconic. This cleanser is $18, which is relatively affordable for what it is, and it's a pretty big bottle. Another favorite of mine this year, which is an old favorite, I used this when I was in college, but I recently started using it a lot more again, and I'm still in love. It's the Paul's Choice Softening Cleanser. It's part of their skin recovery line, and it's just the most creamy cleanser there is if you have very dry skin, or if you're just suffering during the winter months, I highly recommend trying it out. It's effective at cleansing, but this will not get all of your last traces of makeup off, but if you're just wearing sunscreen or if you're doing double cleansing, it really doesn't strip your skin at all. And it feels really silicone-y. So if you like those type of cleansers, I highly recommend checking this one out. One of the best cleansers probably of all time, and it's affordable, and you probably heard of it because everybody's been talking about it and they can't keep it in stock, which is the Inky List Oak Cleansing Balm. It's one of my favorite cleansers probably of all time. It has oats, so it's very calming. It's great for sensitive skin or dry skin. It squeezes out like a balm, so it has oils in it. But once you add water to it, it emulsifies into kind of a white liquid and you can cleanse your skin so well because the oil in it breaks down your makeup. So on days when I'm double cleansing, which is most days, and especially if I have really heavy makeup on, I would use this as my first cleanser and then I will follow up with the Naturium one because the oil is so good at breaking down everything without stripping your skin. I know I keep talking about like cleansers stripping your skin because there are a lot of cleansers out there that are way too stripping, especially ones that are marketed towards people with oily skin. If your cleanser is stripping your skin too much, that can increase the likelihood that you'll get irritation, develop allergic reactions. It could reduce your skin's tolerance to active ingredients. So the oak cleansing balm is a really safe option if you're worried about that. And it's also really affordable. Inky List has some of the most effective, affordable skincare products out there, so. I'm being really dramatic, but I just really love this cleansing balm. This actually reminds me I have to get another bottle. A skincare brand that came out this year from yours truly is Sachu Beauty. I mean, obviously I created these products, so I love them. I think I need to give a special shout out to especially the Gua Sha because I really, really became much more consistent with it. This is stainless steel, so unlike Jade, it doesn't harbor any bacteria. It's easy to clean. You use antibacterial soap and just, just wash it like your silverware. But it has the exact same effect. Even now, right now, it feels really cold to the touch and I just leave it in my room. This has been such a game changer for me, especially for like facial sculpting. I've been very stressed this year, so facial massage was a really big thing for me in my skincare routine, especially my nighttime skincare routine. It's the end of the year and I was looking through older photos and older videos that I did from last year and I feel like I can see a difference in my facial contour. I have been losing a little bit of weight as well, but usually it would take much longer for it to show in my face, but I think because I've been so consistent with this and the puffiness in my face for me was mostly water retention, so this helped drastically. I've also been hearing similar stories from other people who have been using it, which makes me so happy. This is so amazing. I'm gonna give this to all my friends for Christmas. Next, I wanna talk about toners. And I was debating if I wanna do this category at all because toners to me are not necessary. They're just kind of watered down versions of serums because they're usually water-based. It feels like a liquid. It's basically applying water back onto your face after you've cleansed your skin. Instead of doing that, after I cleanse my skin, I just leave my face wet and I put serum directly on my face. That becomes the watered down version of the active and it works just as well. But again, I know a lot of people love toners and again, skincare is individualized. If you are looking for a toner, it is the Claire Supple Preparation Unscented Toner. It has amino acids, hyaluronic acid. It has a very light consistency. It has beta glucan, which is great for sensitive skin. It's great for hydrating your skin and it's really good for calming your skin as well. It also has aloe vera. So this unscented toner is perfect for people who have sensitive skin or is just trying to avoid fragrance or irritants, period. And I think if I were to make a toner, that is what a toner should be. It should be very gentle. It shouldn't irritate you. It's the first thing you apply after you cleanse your skin. So you're applying it to your bare skin. So you gotta make sure it's not irritating your skin. I see so many beauty essences and, and beauty waters that has a lot of essential oils. That's marketed as like botanical and clean. It has a lot of essential oils or alcohol or witch hazel, which, you know, if you like that type of toner, go right ahead, but that's not my preference because it is very stripping to the skin and it could cause irritation, allergic reaction over time. That is the one toner that made it on the list. Now exfoliant.
and we're gonna talk about exfoliants. Do I even have to hold this up? You already know. Paul's Choice 2% BHA Liquid. This is the product in every single one of my skincare videos. I've just been loving this since I started using skincare, but it's just so effective at what it does. I am noticing that exfoliants are becoming more and more popular and more and more brands are developing newer BHAs, which I'm super excited to try out. At, once I'm done with this, I'll try some other brands to see how it compares. But to me, this will always be the golden standard for BHAs because it's so effective. And I love that it doesn't have any other active ingredients that is common irritants, which means that a lot of people can use it. I used to use exfoliants every single day, morning and night, and now I'm scaling it back to basically every other day because I'm also using things like retinols and vitamin C and when I know I'm using an active ingredient or something that could make my skin a little bit more sensitive, I try to avoid exfoliants on that day. And I think that's the best way to introduce yourself to exfoliants. Don't use it every single day. I used to recommend that, but not everybody can tolerate it. And the reason why I love BHA so much is because I have a lot of blackheads around my nose and on my cheek in this area and also on my chin. They're not really blackheads, they look like black dots but they're actually sebaceous filaments basically i'm gonna live with them for the rest of my life they're not typically physically extractable so i could use extractors i could use i can squeeze them but within a couple hours they'll plug back in because it's a sebaceous filament it's not ever gonna go away completely but you can reduce the size of it drastically and BHA is exactly what you need to do that because it cleanses your pores. Unlike AHA, it actually goes deep into the pore and cleanses it out. If you already have blackheads, it will clean them and the pores will appear smaller. You can't technically shrink your pores, but it will appear cleaner and smaller. And it will also prevent future blackheads. And if you are also struggling with pimples and acne, BHA is also a great ingredient to use in your skincare routine. Shout out to salicylic acid, AKA BHA. Next, I also want to shout out this Wish Trend Mandelic Acid 5% Skin Prep Water. This is much more of a texture exfoliant. Again, all the exfoliants I'm gonna mention here are chemical exfoliants because I try to stay away from really harsh scrubs. This is an AHA water. This is 5% mandelic acid. And mandelic acid is a great AHA because it has a bigger molecular size, meaning that it takes longer for it to penetrate your skin, which means that it's less likely that you would have an irritating reaction. AHAs are great for skin texture, age spots, sunspots, dullness it just smooths your skin really well um, it's usually recommended for people who have fine lines sun damage if you find yourself having texture issues or you're starting to develop really rough skin this is a great exfoliant to try the way that all exfoliants works is basically it removes the dead skin cells and it encourages skin cell renewal and AHAs are different in that it solves a lot of surface level issues whereas BHAs go deeper into the skin to unclog pores and glues the dead skin cells so that it can slough off with cleansers. So you do not need both of these. You absolutely do not need both. You can just pick one for a skin type depending on what kind of skin issues you're trying to address. In my opinion, both of these are really good products. Lastly, I'm gonna put serums and moisturizers in the same category. One serum that I really wanna shout out, it is the Tranexamic Acid by, I hope I pronounced that right. It's by Inky List. And this is a newer ingredient that's being marketed to address dark spots and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. This originally was an ingredient that's used for treating surgery scars, and it does a really effective job of encouraging fading of hyperpigmentation. Of course, the first thing you need to do if you're trying to fade dark spots is using sunscreen, but if you wanna speed that up with an active ingredient, this is a really good serum to use. It's relatively inexpensive. No, you do not need $100 serums to fade dark spots. There was no miracle ingredient. It's just about using AHAs, some active ingredients like tranexamic acid, vitamin C, hydroquinone if you can tolerate it. So Inculus does a really good job of that. I feel like this ingredient isn't talked about very much so I love that the Inculus has a product with this active and it's relatively inexpensive. Another serum I've been loving is the Naturium Vitamin C complex serum. This is what it looks like. I love their packaging. It also contains hyaluronic acid and vitamin E. This is a stabilized form of vitamin C. I think this is the biggest trouble with finding good vitamin C serum is to make sure that it's stable and it doesn't degrade. And I love that this is a stabilized vitamin C. This also has a lot of fruit extracts that has a lot of antioxidants, but it's fragrance free, which is great because a lot of vitamin C serums, they add lemon peel oil in it because I don't know, the more lemony it smells, the more people associate it with vitamin C. But this is fragrance free and, and it has kind of a gel texture. I actually really like it. I like it when the serums are more 
of a like a gel consistency instead of liquid personally i just find it really hard for me to find a vitamin c serum that i really love and use consistently so this is something i've been using a lot more of i find that this brightened my complexion in the morning and if you're just looking for a nice stable vitamin c give this a try next i want to talk about moisturizers and one moisturizer i have to talk about the skin fix barrier lipid peptide cream this is my second jar of it i also got one for my mom because she tried it when she visited me and she was obsessed it's jar packaging but it's a pump which means that it does not trap bacteria finding a moisturizer that is occlusive enough is such a struggle usually no matter what moisturizer i put on i always have to apply something that has petroleum jelly on top just so it traps all the moisture when i'm going to bed because if i don't do that in the morning i basically just wake up with dry skin again this is the only moisturizer where i don't feel the need to do that because it's so thick it has three percent healthy skin lipid complex three percent peptide protein blend 3% seaweed hyaluronate blend and 3% lily root extract. I think the ingredients that really makes this amazing for me is the healthy skin lipid complex. This has glycerin, shea butter extract. I think fatty acids is so underrated in skincare. I think people rave a lot more about vitamin C and niacinamide, and, but not as much just simple lipids and fatty acids. And that is actually the building block of your skin. The top layer of your skin is made up of cholesterol, fatty acids, and lipids. So this is a really great moisturizer for barrier repair to make sure there are enough lipids on your skin to repair your skin overnight. This also has peptides, which is a great anti-aging ingredient. Again, this is my second jar. And when I repurchase an expensive moisturizer, you know, it means business. Last but not least, there is a mask that I really like that I purchased from my friend's brand called Astrologens. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but it's their Sagittarius Night Mask. So their brand focuses more on botanical skincare, which really isn't my thing, but they have this Sagittarius Night Mask, which I tried once and fell in love. You can apply it and wash it off, or you can use it overnight. It's labeled essential oil blend. It's not like peppermint or eucalyptus. These are all very gentle. So it has three ingredients, jojoba oil, which I love, rosehip oil, which has naturally occurring vitamin C, but it probably wouldn't be preserved or stayed in that form but it's still a very nice oil to use not to be confused with rose oil which is an essential oil metal foam oil has a lot of fatty acids metal foam seed oil isn't technically an antioxidant but it can positively influence your skin's antioxidant defense this is for people who are really into natural skincare if you want to go that route I think this is a great night mask to use unfortunately it does not have any preservatives some people prefer that preservatives are very important to stop bacteria growth which you will spread all over your skin. I'm fine with this not having any preservatives because it's a very small packet. Basically, you're gonna use this up in two days, but it did make my skin feel very supple the next day. It's also a black owned skincare brand. I'll link their Instagram as well. And that is it. This has been a really tough year. I hope at least you upped your skincare game. And yeah, this is probably one of my longest skincare videos. If there are any new brands that you want me to review or you're interested in, Think it's up my lane you think that i'll like or even think i should just try it out anyway just let me know in the comments i'm always down to try new skincare i don't always like them because i'm very picky but also let me know in the comments what are your top let's say three top three skincare products this year that changed your life thank y'all so much for watching and continuing on my journey with me in 2020 i love y'all so much i hope you guys take care of yourselves and i'll see you next week bye